Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the launch of our much anticipated pathway. It's great to have you here, and we're excited to share the document with you and give you an insight into the journey we have been on in the last two years. I would like to start by highlighting the role of the forum. And the role of the forum is to ensure that the community has a voice in the planning and consultation of health and social care services, as well as encouraging partnership working in line with the national standards for community engagement. As well as fulfilling these com commitments, our members focus each year on a specific topic. In 2018, we had a successful campaign promoting the forum and recruiting new members. Next slide, please. In 2019, members highlighted that they were seeing more and more people with mental health issues and being unsure of where or how to access support services for these people. Finding the right service was difficult and often meant speaking to numerous organisations to identify the path for their clients. Often there was no best path and the workers had to deal with the situation only with the help of their colleagues. This led the forum to agree that mental health and well-being would become a priority area for future development. Next slide. To identify and gather existing local knowledge on mental health services, to increase local and knowledge of existing services and to identify gaps in mental health. We worked with NHS partners to identify and promote local pathways to services for individuals and organisations providing such services in the Hamilton area. It quickly became clear through discussions with forum members that a traffic light referral system was desirable which would easily identify appropriate services for the level of intervention required. Next slide. The purpose of the pathway is essentially to assist individuals and organisations by identifying various service pathways that could help with issues that, if not addressed, could negatively affect an individual's mental health and well-being. The pathway was being co-produced with local organisations and communities and is the first collaborative document presented publicly to the Hamilton locality of South Lanarkshire. Next slide. The process was interrupted by COVID-19 pandemic. It had to be in and this was robust and detailed. It had to be, we wanted to get it right for members and communities. Our journey started in 2019 after we had identified our aims at our development day. It began by organising a consultation with our members surrounding mental health. A total of 39 organisations responded and the following results were seen as significant. 77% of groups and organisations indicated that they had seen an increase in individuals or volunteers experiencing a mental, mental health issue. 97 felt that they would benefit from having a clear and local mental health pathway. And 92% of groups and organisations felt that a document using interventions and a traffic level system would be beneficial. During 2019, we also conducted mapping exercises and research to ascertain what available and what there was, where the gaps and the barriers were to services. We finished the year by holding our very first forum event, where we had a number of mental health organisations come along to showcase their services. This was an excellent meeting and we received very positive food feedback from both speakers and members. It led to us arranging the, uh, our forum's first event, for, sorry, it led to us changing our forum meetings to monthly meetings 
and we now have presentations every two months where one or two organisations come along to showcase their services in order to raise awareness and amongst members. The format has also increased our forum membership and our networking opportunities. Next slide. Early in 2020, a steering group was set up. Members included myself as forum chair, representatives from Lanarkshire, Lark Hall District and Volunteer Group, Lark Hall Community Growers, Lanarkshire Links, Community Links and local individuals. Pathway development sessions were conducted with the steering group and a skeleton plan was created for a traffic light pathway. Shortly after this, COVID hit, which delayed the process and restricted volunteers from actively contributing to the process. We diversified and organised a series of online workshops and video calls, too many to count, to identify inclusion to the AMBER section and the overall development and support for the document. The majority of organisations involved in this process were very supportive and expressed an, a desire to be included in the document. All of them supplied their own information and assisted in the co-production of the document, which changed and developed as a result of feedback from the workshops. For, for example, the pathway name was changed from Mental Health Pathway to a positive pathway for mental health and well-being, and the categories in each section were expanded. We had discussions with relevant NHS staff to explore social subscribing and how the pathway would sit alongside their services. These were very positive with NHS supportive of our aims. We also gathered advice from Association of Mental SAMH, Scottish Association of Mental Health, uh -huh. uh, who supplied information and lists of organisations and both local <clears throat> and national mental health resources. Next slide. <clears throat> it was a busy start to 2021, which seen as planning and facilitating our final focus groups for the green and red sections to agree and identify further content. Gathering all final inf information formally from all those organisations wishing to be included in the pathway. Holding final discussions with the NHS to advise us on how our suggested introduction content was looking. To sense check and make sure relevant information was being included, which was within clinical guidelines. Then finally, <clears throat> the design and release with numerous proofreading sessions, but I'm sure we'll still have missed something. <clears throat> Next slide, please. Evolved from what we thought would be a one page document, it's a 36 page A6 booklet. We were naive, but the process was well worth it. And we now think we have a fantastic resource that can be really useful to both communities and partner organisations. We had also planned to do a bio document detailing information of all those included for other partners. However, due to the design of the final document and the information contained, the steering group concluded that this was no longer required, much to the delight of community link staff. A formal tender process was followed and a, a local designer with experience in voluntary sector working was commissioned following the submission of a number of tenders. At present, only digital copies are available, but we hope to be able to print in the near future so we have some hard copies that we can disseminate. Digital copies mean that all the links in the document are live and can simply be clicked on. PDF can be downloaded from Community Links website and a URL link will be supplied. The document contains four sections and does contain a traffic light style system. Next slide, please. 
Section one of the document is the introduction and guide to using the pathway, which, can, which contains a description of positive mental health and well-being, signs to recognise declining poor health and well-being, ways to take action to improve your mental health and well-being, and a guide on how to use the pathway, the colour coding, etc. Advice was provided from NHS mental health staff who approved and co commented on the con content. It was felt important to seek such advice as the forum members are not clinically trained in any way and didn't want to mislead anyone or potentially risk giving out any harmful advice. Next slide. The green section is a self-help section, mainly for people experiencing a slight decline in their mental health. Next slide. This, contain, this section contains a collection of online self-help resources with live links across a number of themes where individuals can find information and access appropriate support at their own pace. The themed headings include mental health, general health and well-being, drugs and alcohol, get active, learn, volunteering and apps. Next slide, please. This section contains almost 40 organisations of which operate locally, mainly within the voluntary sector. Organisations in this section have been organised for ease and clarity into six different sections. Many of them operate over a number of categories. The organisations contained all indicated that they wanted to be included and more importantly, confirmed that they had the ca capacity to provide services as described. Next slide, please. The six categories are general health and wellbeing, addictions and recovery, finance and housing, youth and family relationships, caring and loneliness, isolation, loss, grief and trauma, employment and education. Next slide, please. The red section is for people experiencing significant mental health issues that need emergency support. Next slide. This section includes a collection of useful organisations that can offer a range of emergency support. We have supplied details for a number of organisations in addition to the normal crisis numbers, such as the Samaritans and Breathing Space. We have tried to include entries that span a number of demographics and backgrounds from young to old. These emergency contacts can all be contacted by phone, but some have text and web chat services for people who find these mediums more comfortable. The majority of these contacts are national organisations that operate either across Scotland or the UK. There is very limited local support services available and these big organisations are fantastic at what they do so we should use them. It is hoped, however, that encouraging individuals to seek early interventions for their challenges or situations will reduce the need to access emergency support, support crisis services. So hopefully this will be the least used section of our members for our members and our local communities. Next slide. You have had a preview today due to the support and involvement in de developing the pathway. It will be officially launched during Mental Health Awareness Week, beginning on Monday, the 10th of May, and we hope there will be significant excitement. Press releases are ready and are some suggested social media posts, which will be dropping into your inbox directly. Please help and support us by promoting and sharing across your networks. Interact with us during Mental Health Awareness Week and help us put the pathway on the map. Community Links will be handling the social media interaction, so get in touch if you have any questions. 
please promote and most importantly, give us feedback. Let us know what you think and tell us if it's useful. It's the only way we will know if it's making a difference. The forum aims to review the doc. Next slide, please. Sorry. The forum aims to review the document on an annual basis to ensure entries are still current and correct. A brief evaluation will be conducted to ascertain individuals' views on the pathway and try to build a picture of not only its use but also its impact. We hope this will commence towards the end of the year. Community Links will continue to host the document on their website and it's hoped that it will also be available on other websites and in libraries and other resources going forward. The steering group will be taking a long end rest until it's time to look at evaluation. And in the meantime, if you are interested in helping with the review or evaluation, please let us know. Any help will be much appreciated. Next slide, please. I would like to finish by thanking the following. Everyone here for coming along today to hear about the new and finally finished pathway. The organisations contained in the pathway for their commitment and support to the process. The members of the subgroup who have been heavily involved in bringing this together and who gave their time willingly to take this work forward. These include Angie, our community representative, Sandra from Latcall and District Volunteer Group, Sharon from Latcall Community Growers, Liz from Lanarkshire Links, and a special thanks to Francesca and the staff from Community Links, without whom this would not have been possible. I hope you will find this a useful resource to enable you to access appropriate help and support for all in an easier and more direct manner.